Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. I'm Denise Graves, and today we'll feature Seventh Day Slumber. Frontman Joe Rojas leads with his powerful story, and the band has two decades of success with two number one Billboard albums and 14 top 10 hits. Seventh Day Slumber is known for the rock sound while delivering a glimpse into answers for deep human struggles. Here they are from Cornerstone Studio with their first set today. A thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ends. Tomorrow, Carolina. 
everything that made you cry is falling to the ground. God supernaturally touched Joe Rojas on the way to the hospital and changed his life forever. The pain from his troubled youth allows him to speak truth into so many lives today. Recently, Terry Black sat down with Joe to share his story. Well, Joe, you have been with Seventh Day Slumber, has been around for almost 20 years or more? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just, uh, just over 20 years. Oh, my goodness. Has it always been a family affair for you? Um, it has been. My wife and I, uh, her name's Lori. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but she uh, she and I have been married almost 18 years, and, uh, and she's been on the road with me since the day we got married. Really? And all three of our uh, boys, all three of our sons, uh -huh. have, uh, have been on the road since they were four weeks old. Oh, my God. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have your oldest son also. He's part of your band. Three years ago, uh, my oldest son actually tried out for the band. Uh -huh. And uh, and he, um, along with two other people, our drummer at the time was his drum teacher. Really? And uh, and so it was really awesome to be able to pa you know pass down yeah. the torch to a student. But uh, was his drum teacher. And I told Blaze, uh, my oldest son, I uh -huh. said, son, this is what daddy does for a living. So you, you're going to have to try out. I can't just let you be in the band because you're my son, although I'd love to. Mm -hmm. And he said, Daddy, I'll try out. And he worked on those songs for audition. He's been in the band now three years. That is what mm -hmm. a testimony that is. It's amazing. That does. It says a lot about his talent, his mm -hmm. perseverance, but his desire as a young man to be part of, of, of this legacy. Absolutely. It, it's, uh, you know, I, I was a, a drug addict and mm -hmm. had no hope in my life and in and out of jails and institutions. And to go from from that also being raised without a father, mm -hmm. uh, to, to go from that and, and now to, to look back on stage and, and see my, my oldest son playing in, the, mm -hmm. in this band and he's praising God as he's playing, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And it's, it's a really, it's a testimony of what God's done in your life over the years. Absolutely, it's redemption. I mean, mm -hmm. he, uh, 
I, you know, I never really felt like I had any value. I never really mm -hmm. felt like I had any worth, and I would look to other people for for approval and for validation mm -hmm. because I just I didn't have a father, and so I, uh, my mother <clears throat> worked hard to raise two boys, but mm -hmm. I, there was just a lot going on in my life. I started using drugs and alcohol when I was 12. 12 and, years and 12 old? 12 years old. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, 14 was the first time I tried cocaine, and that was... I found my drug of choice at that at that okay. moment, and it just made me feel like everything was was better, mm -hmm, you know. But mm -hmm. by 16, I was already in trouble, going to having to go to different behavioral centers and institutions, things like that. Trouble with the law. By 18, I was convicted of my first felony, and I went to big boy jail. Oh my gosh! And uh, my mother you know, would come to visit me. Right. And I saw that I'd broke her heart. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when she was her, she was hurting, she was desperate, and she met this lady that took her to church. And my mother gave her life to Jesus. Okay. And she would pray. For, that's how it, she began to pray for me and tell mm -hmm. me that God had a plan for my life. And she would say, son, God wants to heal your broken heart. She saw beyond the drugs as the, mm -hmm. as the problem and, and knew that there was something deeper that was the issue, and drugs were just a symptom mm -hmm. of a much deeper issue. And and it was, she she just kept saying, "God wants to heal your broken heart." So. And through her prayers, she saw answers. <laughs> well, actually, things got worse before they got better. But okay. my my mother would stand on the promises of God, and, and she knew that God was going to deliver her son, and that God hears hears her. And um, and she and and I ended up making a decision to commit suicide. Oh my I had, goodness. Uh, I was, uh, I'd been, I'd gotten arrested a few more times, just in okay. and out of jails, institutions, made the decision to take my life. Uh, I was going to overdose, and so I, I just did. I did enough drugs at that moment right. that, would, that would stop my heart. My mother walked in unexpectedly just as I overdosed in front of her on her living room floor. She was screaming and crying. She called the paramedics. Then in the back of an ambulance is where I felt the hand of God, where I knew that it was Jesus that was with me, and I gave my life to him in the back of the ambulance. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. And from that time, life transformed, or was it like a rocky journey for you? Or, and, and tell us then. Well, for some people, they don't ever have a craving again. Right. It didn't work that way for me. I mean, healing, healing is a process, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it took about two years for me to get completely clean. But um, I've said this many times before, and it's true. God ruined getting high for me. So okay. when I would go back out, and mm -hmm. I just knew that this wasn't, there was more for, mm -hmm. for me. And anyway, uh, it, it took a couple of years, I'd be clean, and then I'd, right. I'd have to, but my mother prayed me through it, and I could stand, I could also stand on those promises of God. And, mm -hmm. and I would pray and say, I don't, devil, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. You're a liar. I don't have to go do those things. Right. Devil, you're, I would take, I would take every thought captive. It got to the point where I was, I'd imagine this big hand in, in my brain uh -huh. grabbing the thought and like, Throwing it, yeah. Wow. I did whatever I could, but, mm -hmm. um, and so, so it took a couple years, but uh, God is faithful, and even when I didn't have my eyes on him, he had his eyes on me. Oh, my gosh. That is so true, and I know that your mom, she saw the answers to her prayers. Absolutely. Did she not? You get to sing about Jesus. Mm. You know, wow. She's a, she's my biggest fan. Yeah. Other than, you know, my wife yeah, is, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right, you know, but... but uh -huh. uh, it's uh, my mother lives down the road from me now. And, oh, uh, that's so awesome! And so uh, it's it's just it's a, it's amazing. And, and right. for her, I, I can only imagine what that did for her faith. Absolutely. To see this, her her prayers answered, and right. so to all those praying mothers, you that's know, that's what I'm thinking. Absolutely. Praying moms do not give up. Absolutely. I'm just excited for you and what God's doing in your life, and now, okay, life transformed. You start Seventh Day Slumber. Mm -hmm. You write music, and mm -hmm. your music is very, it's heart-driven. How does that come about? We want to make sure that all the songs that we write, um, that they, they reach down into that pain that people are dealing with, mm -hmm. but that we don't just 
talk about pain and hurt, right. that we talk of, that we paint Christ as the answer mm -hmm. to, to your hurt, to your pain, to your struggles, to your issues. And so um, I'll write about my personal journey, mm -hmm. my, my life, but also Facebook messages and Instagram messages from our, our fans, people that said, I'm hurting, I'm going through a lot. And we, and it inspires us to, to write about those issues that um, some, some of um, our fans go through and, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of and teens that we've been able to minister to uh, whether it be on social media or um, out uh, playing mm -hmm. concerts. We've seen over 100,000 people come to Christ. Oh, that at, is uh, so Seventh day exciting. Sunday concerts. So wow. It's pretty amazing. But that inspires yeah. us to write. And obviously, you know, every song we, we pray that, that God, that he'll have his way, that his message mm -hmm. will be heard loud and clear through our music. Um, and, and so, but we, we get a lot of inspiration from our fans and also just from our own personal journeys. You have a new project out called Found, mm -hmm. and that is really, it, it, tell us a little bit about that, the song that's found. The song mm -hmm. Found was actually written by um, our guitar player, Jeremy Holderfield, had this idea and he came to me. He mm -hmm. said, man, I got this idea for a song and I just have a melody. And, and, he, and then I was like, well, let's write it. So we got with another friend of ours named Daniel Doss, who's amazing, mm -hmm. love, love him. And, uh, and we, we wrote the song. We went and wrote it. It was written in about two hours. Oh, my goodness. Once we all three got in a room, it was mm -hmm. written in about three hours. But that song is deeply personal to me. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, you know, four years ago. See, I've been living for the Lord now, uh, well, 20 years, over mm -hmm. 20 years. And, but four years ago, I don't even know what triggered it, but I just went into a depression. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring out every single night. Right. I'm, I'm helping people, but I can't help myself. And, and I, I ended up turning to food and I gained 120 pounds uh, in the past four years. And I was embarrassed to even come out of the bus. And, and sometimes I'm still embarrassed, even as I'm having this interview with you, I'm, I'm going, oh, you know. But, um, but you know, the thing is that, um, this, that um, I, I went through this depression. I didn't, you know, and I'm, and I, I'm not there um, the way I used to be. Right. My, my kids can tell something's different. My wife can obviously right. tell, and, and but they prayed me through it. And uh, you know, my, my middle son, he, he just began to speak to me and I'd see, you know, and he said, I miss you, daddy. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I knew that this, this had to change, yeah. but I didn't know how to change it. And because I'm like, I believe in God. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. still passionate about ministry. But, and I believe it was St. Augustine who said this, that um, well, I woke up one morning and I saw my beautiful wife, Lori, and she's amazingly beautiful. She's my best friend in the world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and our three kids, we were having a sleepover and we were all on the big king size bed. Mm -hmm. And I woke up that morning and I saw them and I said, how can I be married to someone this beautiful and have kids this amazing and still feel this empty? and a successful career in music mm -hmm. and ministering to people. Lives have been changed because of the songs that we've written and performed. And I'm like, how can this even be? And like, I, I believe in you, God, but uh, this, this, the, this saying that I used to put at the end of my emails all the time, and it says that God has created us for himself mm -hmm. and our hearts will always be restless until, they find its, it, until it finds its rest in him. And that's what was happening. It doesn't matter how amazing your wife is or how awesome your kids are. If you don't have that closeness with God, nothing's right. gonna feel right. Mm -hmm. and, th and, and several months ago is, is when I had to make this decision. God, it's my closeness with you that's the problem. I, I've lost that closeness with you, God. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't believe in you anymore. Not that I turned my back on God. I just lost closeness. And the closer you, the further away you get from God, the bigger your problems seem, the bigger your circumstances seem, the, the struggle seems so much bigger. But the closer you get to God, the thing, the problem may not even have changed. It may still be the same, but the closer right. you get to God, the smaller it seems. Right. And uh, your perspective changes because that trust, yeah. you can, when you have closeness with God, the trust is there and you Absolutely. don't have to try to fix it on your own. Absolutely. That's where we are truly found. Mm -hmm. And that's, I love that song. And, and, you know, I just encourage you and Seventh Day Slumber, all of you to continue mm -hmm. doing what the Lord has called you to do. What a what an opportunity you can to share God's love mm -hmm. and help all of us to be found in Him. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us and we will pray with you for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. 
I'm Denise Graves, and I'll see you next week. Value is still calling